hi everyone in this lecture we will discuss about the q of a parallel rlc circuit at the resonant frequency so we will try to analyze the behavior of the parallel rlc circuit at the resonant frequency and then we will compare the energies powers uh, dissipated or you know or or delivered by different circuit elements by applying a, a signal at a frequency of omega naught so we discussed in the last class at the resonant frequency omega naught which is 1 by root lc the impedance of the inductance which is j omega naught and the impedance of a capacitance which is minus j by omega naught c which is also equal to minus j omega naught l okay they both are equal and opposite in mag i mean they are both are equal in uh, magnitude but opposite in sign so therefore they cancel out okay and they behave like an open circuit so the parallel rlc circuit simply reduces to a simple resistor at the resonant frequency and say we feed a sinusoid of magnitude i naught sin omega naught t then the power that is the voltage that is developed across the resistor v t of t which is the tank voltage is simply i naught r or i'll use rp here rp um, it's rp here i naught rp sin omega naught t now the power dissipated across the resistor p of t p r of t is simply i naught square rp into sin square omega naught t okay now i can also write this as i naught rp the whole square by rp into sin square omega naught t now this power it's a purely positive number it's always positive so meaning it power, resistor is always absorbing power and similarly for the voltage so for the current source the input current source if i if i try to calculate pi of t which is pi of t it will be minus of this number minus of p r of t so it's always delivering power to the resistor the power will look like it it's a sinusoid running at twice the frequency it will look like this and the peak value is i not rp the whole square by rp i not rp is the tank voltage the square of that by rp will be the peak power now again we can very easily find the average power which is the sinusoid so with a with an if this is a sin square function so the average will be half and that will be i not rp the whole square by 2 rp now we know the voltage across the tank which is vt of t which is i not rp into sin omega not t now the the current through the inductor il of t uh, we know that the current through the inductor is voltage divided by j omega l so which means current will always lag the voltage so if i feed a sin is the steady state current will be sin of omega not t minus pi by 2 okay divided by omega not l so i can directly write it this way so this is i not rp upon omega not l into minus cos so it will be cos of omega not t with a minus sign okay now the voltage the power dissipated across the inductor so i'll write it as p i n d or p l of t is simply the product of the two current the voltage and the current so we'd we'll actually get i not rp the whole square by omega not l into sin 2 omega not t by 2 okay and uh, similarly i can very easily show the power dissipated across the capacitor will simply be the negative sign with just a minus of this because at the resonant frequency we saw that the impedance of both the capacitance and inductance are same okay the only difference for a capacitor is additional negative sign okay so therefore you would actually get minus of uh, this number which will be plus i not rp the whole square by 2 omega not l into sin 2 omega not t right again uh, this is a very uh, simple uh, reasoning is that the reasoning is that in a parallel lc circuit at the resonant frequency the current drawn by the parallel lc circuit is zero okay 
because whatever current that is flowing here will circulate between the two, the inductor and the capacitor. We discussed briefly in the last class. That's because for any given voltage, the impedances of the inductor and capacitor are exactly same but opposite in, mag in sign. So therefore, if I have a current plus I flowing in the inductor, you will have a current minus I flowing in the capacitor. So the current will loop within the inductor and capacitor and no current enters from the uh, input current or the resistor into the LC tank. Okay, So it will purely be, so the voltage is same for both, the only difference is current will be of opposite signs for both the inductor and capacitor. So from that, we will get this re uh, relation. Now if you find the total power dissipated by both the inductor and capacitor, PL plus PC will always be equal to 0. Voltage is same, current is in opposite direction, the total power is always 0. Now what does that mean is that if I try to plot the power through the capacitor, it is a sine function with twice, uh, twice the frequency of the resonant frequency and for the inductor, it is going to be negative of this. Okay. So what it means is that in any cycle, if the capacitor is absorbing power, inductor is delivering power. So this is PL is less than 0, PC is greater than 0. So any power that is absorbed by the inductor is delivered by the capacitor and vice versa. If when the capacitor is absorbing power, inductor is delivering power to it or when inductor is absorbing power, capacitor will deliver power to it. Okay. So they do not draw any power from the input source. The input source does not provide any power to the LC tank. The input power it is purely drawn by the resistor itself RP here. And this peak power, peak power either I mean across either of the uh, two elements is simply IP RP the whole square okay by 2 omega naught m. Okay. The peak to peak value, the peak to peak value is IP RP the whole square by omega naught L. The peak to peak power dissipation, power dissipated across either the inductor or the capacitor or delivered or dissipated or delivered across the uh, inductor or the capacitor is IP RP whole square by omega naught L. Now for a resistor we just saw the peak to peak power, I mean it is always positive. Uh, so the peak is also is, is same as the peak to peak was actually IP RP the whole square by RP square RP. Now if I take the ratio of the power dissipated by the active element the energy storing element to the dissipating element then I would get so I am just going to take the peak to peak power across the inductor uh, PL peak to peak to PR peak to peak that is going to be RP by omega naught L. Now this I am going to define it as Q. Okay, So this is I am going to define this as Q. Now we also encountered Q in a series L, series RL circuit and RC circuit, series RC and parallel RC and uh, uh, series RL and parallel RL circuits, we have defined it for that. It is a very similar definition here as well. Okay. And also there is a general uh, accepted result for the definition of Q in a resonant circuit, I mean in a parallel RLC circuit as well and that is the, the I mean this is, this is pre pretty common in many physics textbooks, it is 2 pi into the peak energy stored, the peak energy stored by the total energy lost in a period. You take any system you find the peak energy stored and divide it by the total energy lost in a period and multiply it by 2 pi, you would get the Q of the system, the Q of the circuit. Okay. Now again this is pretty simple to find, um, For a, we just need to find the inductor current, the voltage across the tank is I, uh, I naught RP, the voltage across the tank is I naught RP sin omega naught t. Now uh, this is the voltage across the tank and the current through the, if I know the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the inductor then I can, I know the energies for both the elements. I L of t, we just uh, saw that few moments ago, it is actually I naught R p 
upon omega naught L into cos omega naught T with a minus sign. So to compute the energy stored in the capacitor, I will simply do half C V the instantaneous energy is half C, half C V square. So half C I naught R P the whole square sine square omega naught T. And the energy stored in the inductor, so this is E C and E I E L of T is half L I square, so which will be I naught R P the whole square by omega naught L the whole square into cos square omega naught T. Okay. Now this term here, uh, this term I can write it as L by omega naught L the whole square is simply C. I mean if you just expand it you would actually get 1 by omega naught square L and substitute omega naught square as 1 by LC you would get C. Okay. So this term can be written as half C I naught R P the whole square into cos square omega naught T. So the total energy stored which is E C plus E L is half C I naught R P the whole square into cos square omega naught T plus sin square omega naught T and this will be simply equal to half C I naught R P the whole square. This is the total energy stored in the system, it is always constant. Okay because energy is simply getting transferred between the inductor and capacitor okay, and it is always constant. So even though they are sinusoidal functions, instantaneous energies are sinusoidal functions, the total energy in the system between the inductor and capacitor is always constant. The sum of the energies, two energies is always constant. Now the power dissipated across the resistor, the average power dissipated across the resistor, resistor we knew that it is I naught square R P you have to simply multiply current into voltage. So current is sine and voltage is also sine. So sine square omega naught t and I can express this as half minus half cos 2 omega naught t. So this is the power dissipated. To compute the average power if I should just compute the average value in a single cycle. Now this the average value of a single cycle in a sinus for uh, average value of a sinusoid in a single cycle is 0. So it will simply reduce to half I naught square RP okay so this is the total power uh, the average power the average power within a, in a single cycle okay I have just compute the integral for this function within a single cycle Z integral 0 to T and 1 by T of this function DT and I get half I naught square RP by 2 Now this result, if I use the expression, the, the expression for the Q here, so we have the total energy 2 pi, so 2 pi into total energy which is half C I naught R P the whole square by half I naught square R P into T. This gives me Q, so 2 pi by T is omega naught, so this would be omega naught half i naught square i naught square would cancel out we would get omega naught c r p. Now we also know omega naught c at the resonant frequency is 1 by omega naught l so this is also equal to r p upon omega naught l. So this is the same value of q, q which we derived few moments back. So this is this is other definition a more popular definition of q for any resonant circuit and for a parallel RLC circuit Q is R P by omega naught L or omega naught C R P. Again, if you remember, we discussed for a parallel R C circuit. So when we had just a capacitor and a resistor R P and C, uh, I said when you have two elements in parallel, the one with the lower impedance will always matter. Okay, so ideally. Uh, the one with the lower impedance for example if your capacitor has very low impedance or we can also say the one with the higher admittance so you just have to take the ratio of the two admittances the admittance of a capacitance is omega naught c divided by 1 by rp you would get 
omega naught c r t. It will tell you how well this parallel R C circuit behaves like a capacitor. If it is a pure capacitor then R p has to be infinity therefore q will be infinity. And similarly we could also define it for a parallel R L network. The larger is the admittance the better it behaves like that I mean it better it behaves like for example if it is an inductor and a resistor in parallel we want the inductive impedance to be small or because they both are in parallel the smaller impedance will dominate or the larger admittance okay so or the larger admittance will matter so we just have to take the admittance which is 1 by omega naught l into 1 by rp so you get uh, into by i'm just going to take the ratio by 1 by rp you would get rp by omega naught l see by this definition you want this to be as high as possible and this term to be as low as possible for the admittance of rp to be as low as possible rp should be infinity then you would get q it tells you how reactive this circuit element is okay so this is the uh, definition of q uh, for a parallel rl circuit so we'll also have there is also one other definition for q uh, which we'll discuss uh, when we start discussing about the frequency response of a parallel rlc circuit so i'll uh, stop at this point